Thank you very much, Laura Oakman, and welcome to Hancock Stadium here in beautiful, sunny Northern Illinois with Jack McInerney. I'm Mike Lederman. We have got the first of six high school championship games for you this weekend, and it is a very colorful Class 1A, Jack. We've got the Arcola Purple Riders against the Blue Boys of Carthage. Actually, these two teams met back in 1988 for the championship. Arcola won it 15 to nothing, even though they fumbled eight times and lost seven of them. They want to repeat the result, but actually not how they got there. Well, both of these teams have been very successful this year. They're both 13 and 0. But Carthage comes into this ball game starting eight starters that have been starters for three years, going 10 and 1, 10 and 1, and now 13 and 0. They've got a big advantage in experience. Tremendous tradition in our cola. 101 years of football. They have been in the final six times and they've won three. The last time back in 1988, they were beaten in their last appearance here in 1991. They found themselves this year, says Coach Joe Marks, when they put John. Four, number 27 at tailback. And they found him at tight end. They never throw the ball, so they might as well give him the ball to run with. He's run 338 times for almost 1,700 yards. He's a heck of a fine former tight end. Carthage, they used to be known as Carthage Hancock. Now they're playing old Carthage High School. They have got a three-headed monster in the backfield, three 1,000-yard runners, Kenton Patrick, Dennis Covington, Joel Morehouse. They're all mighty mites. You can hardly find them, and I guess the opponents are having a problem, too. Well, they play a great offense. They play the wing tee, a lot of misdirection. They rarely throw the football, and with these kids running with the ball, with three of them that go over 1,000 yards, they got a great backfield. Well, they've only thrown the ball for 17 completions. Nine of them have been for touchdowns. So what does that tell you? They pass economically. Meanwhile, we hope you have had a wonderful Thanksgiving and have gotten through your turkey. Certainly, our crew here at Sports Channel has done a job on theirs. And we will take you out to the field right now with our man on the sidelines. We'd like to welcome from the Chicago Sun-Times veteran prep writer. He's Steve Tucker. Thanks, Mike. Uh, it's beautiful football day, 30 degrees, crisp, cool. Very little wind out here. Uh, really doesn't feel as bad as a few of the last few weekends with the cold wind and the rain and stuff. Great day for football. Uh, fields in great condition, playing on the turf here. Um, back to you, Mike, for the opening lineups. Thanks, Steve. And uh, we have uh, the uh, starting lineups being announced by public address announcer Steve Adams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineups for today's Class 1A state championship game featuring the Purple Riders of Arcola High School and the Blue Boys of Carthage. First, introducing the starting defensive lineup for Arcola. Let's meet the head coach of Arcola, Joe Marks. At left hand, number 64, Jeremy Schunkweiler. At left tackle, number 79, Casey Conlon. At right tackle, number 66, Junior Gauna. At right end, number 63, John Vandeveer. At linebacker, number 83, Alan Lathrop. At linebacker, number 65, Tony Douglas. At linebacker, number 34, Kevin Monahan. At defensive back, 21, Matt Venhaus. At defensive back, number 27, John Foran. At defensive back, number 36, Colin Peterson. And at safety, number 12, Barry Pullen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, those are the Purple Riders of Arcola High School. And now, let's meet the starting offensive lineup for Carthage. First, introducing the head coach of the Blue Boys, Jim Unruh. At left end, number 27, Brian Bruns. At left tackle, number 67, Ryan Bergman. At left guard, number 70, Sid Holmes. At center, number 54, John Shoemaker. At right guard, number 55, Jason Jefferson. At right tackle, number 58, Corey Whitaker. At right end, 34, Spencer Swearingen. At quarterback, number four, Joey Dion. At halfback, number 24, Dennis Covington. At flankerback, 33, Joel Morehouse. And at fullback, number 44, Kenton Patrick. Those are the Blue Boys of Carthage High School. There are your starting lineups. Again, with the 1A, the smaller schools, you'll find lots and lots of two-way players, and there's a tremendous amount of experience in the coaching levels as well. Let's go back down to Steve Tucker for some more background on the teams, how they got to the finals. It was a long and winding road. I guess this is Beatles week, right, Steve? Sure is, Mike. Uh, First of all, for um, the road to normal for Carthage, uh, in their four playoff games, they've uh, started off with a victory over Peoria Heights, 44-18, uh, then Kiwani Weathersfeld, Skiota 14 to nothing in the quarterfinals, and then last Saturday, they beat Sterling Newman, a traditional state power, 14 to six in the semis. Uh, Arcola defeated Arthur by one point, 14 to 13, then Chinoa 30 to 28, two real close games in the first two. They beat Cerro Gordo six to nothing in the quarters, and Greenfield 26-16 last Saturday in the semis turned their sixth straight, their sixth berth in the uh, championship game. They're three and two. Arcola's near Champaign, middle of the state, and Carthage is right near Quincy, over by the Mississippi River in western Illinois. For the kickoff, let's go back up to Mike Lederman. Thank you, Steve. Colin Peterson, a freshman, is going to kick the ball off from Arcola. Get used to looking at number 36. He is a tremendous talent, only 15 years old. He kicks, he punts, he plays defensive back, and he's a flanker on offense. He will be kicking to Benjamin Jefferson, Joe Morehouse, number 33 is Morehouse, 36 is Jefferson, and we will be underway. Jefferson takes it on his own 18. They throw the fake. But it is still Jefferson, and Jefferson gets close to the 30-yard line and is brought down by a host of Purple Riders, and we are underway. The Blue Boys obviously in blue, the Purple Riders, the uh, visitors in the white top. It's amazing to have a freshman be able to kick off in a state championship game and to think that he might be down here several other times. All right, taking a look at the uh, def the backs and the wide receivers, Dion, Covington, Patrick, Brian Bruns, Joel Morehouse, and Swearingen. The two backs, Covington and Morehouse, are about five foot four. And the first give is to Morehouse. And Joel Morehouse breaks it. Look at him go. Morehouse down inside the 35-yard line. John Ford makes the stop. 
but right off the bat, sweeping around the left side, 31 yards. Tremendous faking in this misdirection play here. Two separate fakes before the the final result here of a long run in the first play from scrimmage. Outstanding misdirection. Warren with the angle saving the touchdown for now. So down to the 39-yard line with a first and 10 with the wing tee. And they give it to the fullback. And this is Kenton Patrick, 5'11", senior. He goes for a couple of yards right into the middle of the Purple Riders line. We take a look at the line. Bergman and Hulls, watch them. Hulls at 250 pounds is a mover. John Shoemaker, Jason Jefferson, and Corey Whitaker over at right tackle. There is Dion, the quarterback. He is a senior. He's six foot one, 175 pounds. And he's got a second down. Call it six. And again, it's Kenton Patrick. And Kenton Patrick pulls, but the ball's on the ground. Looks like the uh, Blue Boys were able to cover up as Kenton Patrick coughed the ball up. Great faking on this drive by Dion. Faking to Patrick initially. Let's take a look at it. You can see why they have that tremendous misdirection. Second back through. Great hit here right at the end. And there's where the ball hits the ground. If you're a linebacker on that ball club, you've got a tough time keeping track of who has the football. So it goes for no gain. And we're third down and six. And this time they give it to the other back. And trying to break away, but not being able to do so is Dennis Covington, as he is brought down by number 21, Matt Venhaus, and Colin Peterson, number 36. So this will bring up a fourth down. Again, the fake, a counter coming back with the trap to the backside. Nice effort here by Covington. He's one step away, or one shirt, shirt tail away from breaking a big one. Well, we have a fourth and three right here from the 32, an early decision, an easy one. For Jim Unruh, they're going to go for it. And not getting through is Covington, and it looked like the whole right side of the line. Junior Gaona, number 66. John Vandeveer, number 63, with a big stop. And the ball will go over. Again, faking the fullback initially up the middle and then coming back to the weak side. Just a kick out trap with great penetration by the linebackers and especially the backside linebacker, Jeremy Schokweiler, 5'6, 190 pound seniors. Sniffed that out, made the big defensive stop. Look at Chad Boyer there on defense for the Purple Riders as Arcola takes over after the stop on down. Barry Pullen, number 12, is the quarterback. They'll set up in the eye. Over in the slot will be. Colin Peterson, and the give first off is to John Foran, and Foran to the 38-yard line. Kenton Patrick makes the stop. Half a dozen players are two-way players on the Blue Boys roster. There's your offensive look. Pullen, Foran, Peterson, Kevin Monahan, the receivers Lathrop and Van Tripp, number 30. The line, Conlon, Schunkweiler, McNamer, Vandeveer, and Gauna. We told you, Junior Gauna. 270 pounds. That's Junior Gona. I wonder what Senior Gona looks like. Gain of four. Second down. And again, it's first man through. This time it is Kevin Monahan. He's brought down by Corey Whitaker, the linebacker, number 58. Gets to the 40-yard line. Bring up a third and about five. There's a look at Barry Pullen. Five feet, 11 inches, 170 pounds. Senior. Normally, Kevin Monahan, the fullback, is 6'3", 180-pound senior is the leading blocker for John Foran. As you look at the defensive line, Patrick Livingston, Jefferson, Boyer, and Hulls. Whitaker, Swearingen, Brian Jacob, number 21, Naylor, Chad Boyer, and the quarterback, Joey Dion, plays the safety slot. Third and four. This time they go to Foran, and Foran is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage, and credit that to number 70, Sid Hulls. They're all state 250-pound two-way tackle. Playing on the nose here, on defense. Little counter trap, fullback goes one way, they pull the guard, you can see right here, he's kicking out of the trap, but they get penetration from the linebackers, come in the seam, in behind that pulling guard, right in there, great penetration, big defensive stop. So Colin Peterson will go back to punt. The twin safeties will be Morehouse and number 27, Brian Bruns. from 
runs, gets a good turf bounce, and runs. Making a risky play, but he had to do it inside the 20-yard line. So, 41-yard punt, no return. We will come back right after these words. No score, 721 to go. Arcola and Carthage, it's the Class 1A title matchup. Seven minutes, 21 seconds to go. First quarter, there you look at the officials. Don Cook is the referee from Forreston. John Fintrock, the line judge from Mount Morris. Craig Niss from uh, an arc, the umpire. Wilcox in the back judge. And Andrew Yellow from Rockford is the linesman. So first and 10 from their own 19. Second possession here for the Blue Boys. And right up the middle, they come with the fullback, Kenton. And look at Patrick Kenton go. He's going to go unless he gets caught from behind by Venhouse. Venhouse can't get him. 81 yards. Touchdown, Patrick Kenton. He didn't have breakaway speed, but boy, did he have blocking. Well, a great job up front, and that's always the key to those kind of runs. Inside with all those misdirection plays, it gets the linebackers wanting to move outside, and here it's just a trap inside of the fullback. He bounces. The linebackers were squeezed inside. He bounces to the outside. Now it's just a foot race. Who has the lighter piano on their back here? And uh, Kenton Patrick, 5'11", 180-pound senior, 1,400 yards, 22 touchdowns going into that particular play, number 23 for him. 23 touchdowns on the season, all of them rushing for Patrick Kenton. They're going to go for two right here, and again they go with Kenton, and he is in. He's got all eight points. Nice way to start the first quarter of the state championship game for Kenton Patrick. In this wing tee offense, it always starts with the fullback. In this case, it's Ken Kenton Patrick. Kenton Patrick, as we look at the, uh, the two-point conversion again. Good power, showing real good power after that long run. So that took all of one play, 81 yards. The two-point conversion, and Carthage is on the board, 8-0. 6.59 to go here in the... Uh, in the first quarter. There you look at Kent Patrick, and you talk about all their misdirection between the first and last names and the confusion and the misdirection. I'll tell you, you got to keep your eyes open <laughs> for the It's fun, isn't it? And the other, the sad part of it is, here the young man plays both sides of the ball, and now he's got to go out to kickoff after scoring eight points for him on an 81 yard run and a two point try after, and now he's on the kickoff team. Now, listen, when you have 200 kids in the school, why not? At least you get your money's worth. You're now, playing, that's you're playing. efficiency at its finest. Patrick with 85 with 117 ground yards so far for the Blue Boys. There is John Shoemaker. He is a junior. The deep men will be Van House number 21 and Van Tripp number 30. Goes to trip side of the field, but it is short. Trip takes it in his own 25 and doesn't get much farther at the 26-yard line. Knocked out of bounds by a host of Blue Boys, led by number 51, a sophomore guard, Justin Miller. I don't think that that's what he wanted to do on that kick. It almost resulted in an onside kick. And that receiver really got drilled when he picked up the ball. Simple to recap the scoring drive, the one play after the punt, 81 yards right up the middle. You look at Jim Unruh, his team is up by a score of eight to nothing, and that's more points than he scored in his last final. That was seven years ago. And it really almost looked yeah, like it took 22 seconds for him to run that 71 yards or 81 yards. Once again, they give it to John Foran as Arcola has its second possession. Foran trying the left side of the line with Kenton Patrick, Mr. Do-It-All, coming up to make the stop. Maybe they'll give him a breather, probably around the fourth quarter. That's a possibility. Well, well, field position obviously hasn't been very good right here for the Purple Riders. They need to get out of this, out of the hole here, because if they have to punt through the ball back in good field position, it could be a long quarter. Pick up a three, second and seven, and back to throw his first pass is Cullen. Looking deep and over, shoots out on Lathrop, the tight end. Defended back there. By the cornerback uh, Naylor. 
he had him open Mike and he'd been able to put the ball on the money now they don't throw too often he's only thrown 82 times completed 37 for 552 yards little play action fake here to foreign and he almost gets drilled backside just after he releases the ball that would have been a big play for them Christian Boyer almost got him here on third down a quick hitter and breaking it a little bit into the secondary close to first down yardage is foreign Joey Dion coming up from the safety spot to make the tackle they will be about a half a yard short and another fourth down coming up for Joe Marks so Joey Dion the quarterback and safety making the play and it'll be a fourth down and one they'll send Peterson back to punt it for the second time Carthage didn't believe Arcola, so they had the safety men up. Now they retreat. Well, this could also be a play where they try and pull them off, and they don't. Peterson punts it, and wisely Morehouse lets it go, and it takes a nice roll inside the 20. The famous again, AstroTurf bounce, 47 yards. No return on the punt for Arcola. And once again, deep in its own territory, as you look at Colin Peterson, uh, 47 yards and no return. I think the Bears will take that, won't they? <laughs> he could go up there right now and make a few bucks. Well, you get the AstroTurf roll. So from their own 18 now, 82 yards away, remember what happened the last time. This time they give it to Covington, and Covington trying to swing it wide. Corey Peterson knocks him out. Colin Peterson knocks him out. Short gain. Well, they stopped him from going north and south on that particular play, and in this instance, he wants to go south, and they force him to continue to go west, and that's what you need to do with this defense, misdirection. If you get pulled inside, they turn that corner. You're in trouble. Pick up a four, second and six. Dion over center, and he gives it to the first man, Kenton Patrick. And Patrick, a couple more yards. Tony Douglas, the inside linebacker, 5'11", 235 pounder, leading tackler on the team, made the stop. There is Joey Dion again. Very clever. All state player in his own right. You can see he said, well, he doesn't pass. He hands the ball off, but boy, does he do it well. And again, the misdirection. This time it goes around the left side. This is Morehouse. Morehouse turning the corner, knocked out of bounds by Naylor. That's second by Adam Whitson. But he's got first down yardage. You know, and actually, they had him stopped and pinned. And just a little hesitation, he wanted to cut back. And the corner cut up underneath. And he was able to dip it outside and pick up the first down. Let's take a look at it right in here. Well, that's where he's already turned the corner, but the earlier move that he wanted to turn up inside, he picks up the first down. On the 39-yard line. Excellent perimeter speed by both Morehouse and Covington. You know, when you've got a big fullback like Kenton Patrick coming up the middle, to have those outside, that outside speed with Morehouse and Covington is quite advantageous. They're checking on the linebacker, Adam Whitson, who uh, knocked the ball carrier out of bounds, and hope everything's okay there. The assistant coach is talking to him, so we are back with a first and ten from their own 32. Kenton Patrick. And Kenton Patrick, here we go again to midfield. Patrick rips off an 18-yard gain. Colin Peterson on the stop. And they are driving the Purple Riders nuts with their sleight of hand and Joey Dion. He does a great job. You have to have a quarterback that really has quick feet to have that kind of deception in this particular offense. The Delaware wing tee, faking the fullback and the wingbacks. And it really keeps those linebackers guessing. Ball just short of midfield. Purple Riders with the ball, leading 8-0. Kenton Patrick again, and right over the middle, cuts it to the right. Gains of six yards. Tony Douglas making the stop. You talk about an offense that's averaging uh, better than 400 yards a game, and now we know why. Well, right here, it's just a little trap with Patrick. And this is one of the reasons why those, the halfbacks have over 1,000 yards, because the linebackers start keying so much on Patrick inside that they start squeezing the defense inside, and that allows Covington and Morehouse to bounce it outside. 
Morehouse on the wing right. Second and four. Once again, straight ahead for the first down, Kenton Patrick. Good block by Jason Jefferson, the right guard, sprung him, and that game will take Carthage inside the 40-yard line of Arcola. You can see right here, just a simple dive. And again, 55, Jason Jefferson, and 54, John Shoemaker, the center, doing a great job. Pick up of 12, first and 10. Don't take your eyes off the quarterback. There's Patrick again, and Patrick gets another five yards. Tony Douglas makes the stop. There is Tony Douglas, his 102nd tackle of the year. Good place to have that big linebacker, 235-pound senior. You see, it's been all Carthage so far. 8-0 the lead, under three minutes to go first quarter. The Blue Boys are driving again. Again, the wing tee to the right. And this time it goes to the other back. This is Covington and Covington. About a yard or two short of the first down. Once again, Tony Douglas, Ryan Bergman opening up the hole for Dennis Covington. Covington, five foot six, 160, maybe. Well, the key to that was the initial fake to Kent Patrick on the misdirection play, and then coming back with Covington behind Sid Hall, 6'2", 250 pound senior. Third and two from the 28. Ninth play of the drive. And straight ahead, Kenton Patrick, and he is close to the first down. Brought down by Casey Conlon, the defensive left tackle. He's a 220 pounder. Just a straight dive right here that just a surge by the inside by those two guards in the center. Hull, Shoemaker, and Jefferson. Our pole is playing an even front, which means there's nobody on the center. And they're taking advantage of that by running that pullback right up the cut. Minute 45, first quarter. It's fourth and one. Wedging him out, going for it. Joey Dion right behind the center shoemaker, and Dion has got it. The key to this will be the surge of the offensive line. Let's take a take a look at where the blues are and the whites are. You can see right here, all they're doing is wedge blocking, just surging forward. Nice job by the Blue Jays of Carthage. Well, the Arcola defensive line outweighs the Carthage offensive line by about five pounds a man, but they are being moved. First down, Kenton Patrick, no, the fake to him, it goes to Morehouse, and Morehouse is gonna be gone. Four on the last chance, no way. Ooh, or does he? Well, they're signaling, I think, at about the one yard line, John Foran saving the touchdown, coming across. Trying to get that water bug. Apparently, he did so just short of the goal line. Let's take a look here again, starting with Patrick, a fake up the middle, second man through. And there's Joel Morehouse, 137 carries, 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns. And you can let's see where his leg goes down. Apparently, they must. It was marked back that he stepped on the line. Let's take a look at this great camera right there. Great spot by the official and great camera work. First and goal from the three. They give it this time to Kenton Patrick, and he is in. Kenton Patrick, second touchdown and 11 play drive. Boy, is that a beautiful thing to watch. 14-0 for Carthage. Well, they run it to perfection, and as we talked about in our opening, they have eight starters on this team that have started since their sophomore year. Here's the play right here, going in behind number 70, Sid Hall, 6'2", 250-pound senior guard. And there's another touchdown for Kenton Patrick. Well, rack him up. 24 on the season and even two dozen for Kenton Patrick. But you look at a team effort and you're seeing it right here in blue. Again, the try for two. Once again, he put two more on the board. Kenton Patrick. Either way you say it, forwards or backwards, it's 16 points for the Blue Boys of Carthage, Jack. Well, you know, the, we talked about in the open again, having all those sophomores, and sometimes you, you uh, suffer playing sophomores on the varsity level, but when they started those kids, eight of those kids as sophomores, they went 10 and one. And then last year's juniors, they went 10 and one again, and now here they are at 13 and 0, and this veteran experienced offense is paying off. They're looking awful good down here. Another touchdown by Patrick. Big workhorse inside. Kenton Patrick has got two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. 
And it is 16 to nothing for Carthage. And we're still in the first quarter with a little over a minute left. They really have dominated. Just a great job of misdirection. It really puts a tremendous amount of pressure on that defense. They really can't stunt because they'll take themselves right out of play. You gotta stay home and the longer you hesitate, that's when that misdirection comes into play. Shoemaker will kick to trip at Venthouse. And we'd like to welcome our new monitor to the studio right now. We appreciate that. Trip. On the short kick, and Van Trip was tripped up. He was, and uh, I was going to let you say that, Jack. Thanks, Mike. You're always. Brian Bruns, number 27, after a 12-yard return, makes the play. So a uh, little better field position here on their own 32 for Arcola. And there is Brian Bruns. 12 plays, 4.07, a four-minute, seven-second drive. 82 yards, and Kenton Patrick finishing it off with a three-yard run. So they can strike quickly, or they can drag it out. Right now, they've got a 16 to nothing lead. Puller. Looking and looking long for, for Colin Peterson. Chad Boyer on the defense, but ball was overthrown. Nice arm for pulling. Looked real good, and I, I, I like to call first down, first and 10. Loosen up that secondary. I mean, if you go for an obvious situation, when you get third and 10, they know it's coming. First down's a good time to come back to it and loosen up that secondary to get that running game going. Look at Chad Boyer, only one of two juniors on the defensive lineup. Well. You know, sometimes they'll say statistics don't tell you the story. They do here. Fifty-two seconds left here in the first quarter. The officials are conferring. The referee, Don Cook, and we will see what that is. No, we won't. We'll be taken care of. There it is. Okay. Monahan, the fullback four in the tailback and they give it to Monahan and Monahan breaks and Kevin Monahan look at Kevin Monahan go finally knocked out by Jacob Brian Jacob and what a play by Kevin Monahan again pull back the fullback 38 yards and a big gainer and reason for the purple rider fans to cheer well actually his own man slowed him down it's just an inside trap right here you can see him blocking down 64 kicking out Kevin Monahan Kind of lanky at 6'3", 180-pound senior. And right here, he gets kind of slowed down, which gives the angle to the defensive back here. Makes the play, but a nice gainer for the Purple Riders. Alan Lathrop with a good block. Six-foot senior tight end. And into Blue Boy territory of the Riders in the final 40 seconds. Pullen throwing the game. This one is picked off. To the 30-yard line, the interception made over there by Sam Naylor, the cornerback, 5'10 senior, and just as quickly the air goes out of the Purple Riders' balloon. Well, that ball was tipped, but it still was overthrown. It was not a good throw. Let's take a look again. Play action off the counter fake. He's looking to go to the tight end right here. He's not even looking for it. And the corner come, rolls up underneath there in a cover, too. The safety was taking the deep man, and he picks it off. Looking for Van House and overshoots him, and he was under pressure, Jack. Got some pressure from Sid Hulls up front. So with 32 seconds to go, and the 32, uh, first and 10 on the 32. And unfortunately, on that play, they had a player on the sideline, and they kind of went into him. The player that was down originally from that injury, as you can see at the top of your screen, uh, looks like they're going to be taking uh, Adam Whitson off on a stretcher to an ambulance, and then this is it brings everything to a halt right here. And we don't know the extent of the injuries. We'll see if we can send Steve Tucker down to check it out. This is uh, early in the game. Adam Whitson, the sophomore linebacker, came in and made a stop and was injured on a play and. Well, the way he's sitting there with his hands by his head, it's got to be a knee or an ankle. Thankfully, he's, uh, he looks like he's fine with the exception of the injury to the lower extremity. Uh, looks like a right leg or right knee. <laughs> and 
uh, Whitson, only 15 years old, plays some tight end as well. And we certainly hope uh, he will be all right. You know, it's amazing over the years, um, the care that's taken for the health and welfare of these uh, student athletes. Everybody has trainers. There's always doctors on the sidelines. And of course, when we come down here to Illinois State, each team has their own trainer and their own team doctor. But Illinois State also provides trainers and doctors. So they really do take care of these uh, athletes down here. Well, again, we'll see if we can uh, get an idea of uh, the extent of the injury and, and how it happened. We know we did uh, call it early in the game. It was on the first series, I believe. And there's Adam Woodson. You can see he's conscious. He's talking to the attendants there. And he, uh, we hope, will be okay when they when they check him out over at the hospital. Adam Whitson, the injured player. We will get back to action here. Meanwhile, just to give you an idea of what's been going on, the Purple Riders have the ball following the interception. They lead it on two Kenton Patrick touchdowns, one of three yards, one of 81. And it has been all Carthage so far. Final seconds here in the first quarter. And the story, Joey Dion. Watch him handle the ball. And the wing T right. Dion to throw it. Dion is trapped in the backfield, but he's got 10. He's got 20. And look at Joey Dion. Got one man to beat. And Colin Peterson gets him. Joey Dion inside the 20. Brian Brunt throwing a key block downfield. 50 yard scamper. Boy, they can do no wrong today. And actually, he came cut back in. You can see he's getting pressure right here. He actually gets hit, which forces him to start scrambling. And he had been looking right, so the secondary had rolled that kind of coverage. And uh, right here, he's got an open field. He's got John Foran down the field right after he cuts back right here. And he cuts right back. Foran forces him to turn back in. Nice scramble, big run. And Peterson, the freshman, makes the stop after the 50-yard run. The Purple Riders are stunned. The Blue Boys are in business again. Meanwhile, that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Carthage, 16, Arcola nothing. It's the Class 1A championship. Back for the start of the second quarter, the Carthage Blue Boys following the 50-yard stamper by quarterback Joey Dion on the 19-yard line of Arcola. Kenton Patrick. And Patrick stopped for about a yard gain. Tony Douglas making the play. And it's Football Friday on Sports Channel. As you know, 2A Championship follows this game. Uh, Jim Blaney, Bill Gorley will bring it to you about 12.30 at 4.30 on Sports Channel Plus Live. 3A and 4A Championships. And tomorrow, starting at noon, 5A and 6A, including a Wheaton Warrenville, Naperville Central. Big matchup in 6A. Jack and I will bring that one to you. Gain of eight. This is Morehouse. And Morehouse, baby to the one foot line. Colin Peterson saves the touchdown for the moment. But Morehouse just scoots around that left end. There's the counter action. Fake again to Patrick. Second man through. They get that big tackle out there pulling. And I'm really kind of surprised Morehouse. Of course, he's only 5'4". Didn't dive in right here. Looks like he thought he was going to get in with no problem. They mark it on the one. Schankweiler knocking him out of bounds on the one. So first and goal from the one yard line. And sneaking across for the third touchdown for Carthage. Put it back, Joey Dion. Guess which way he goes. Over the left guard, number 70, Sid Halls. 6'2, 250 pound senior. That's the guy they want to go behind. Well, if Kenton Patrick did the first drive by himself, this was Dion's for number three, a 50 yard scamper when he couldn't find a receiver. And finishing it off with the one yard plunge. And it's 22 to nothing for Carthage. Once again, the try for two. Everything else has worked. Good pitch. And Covington is in there. Dennis Covington gets the two point conversion. And with 
44 seconds gone in the second quarter. Carthage, this boy, is on a roll. Right here, it's just a quick pitch getting outside. You can see where they're pulling the left tackle, Ryan Bergman, 6'4", 200-pound 200, 200 senior. He gets out there, two-point conversion. Watch the left tackle. He pulls out just a quick pitch to get to the perimeter. You get that big tackle out there in a the little cornerback. And Dennis Covington just rides Ryan Bergman into the end zone for the two-point conversion. There is Dennis Covington, 5'6", he's listed, 160 pounds, a senior. 1,071 yards rushing, but even more significant, he averages nearly 10 yards a rush. There you look at Van Tripp, one of the deep men. Along with Matt Venhouse, there is John Shoemaker, who will kick off again. He's had a busy right leg. And Arcola is going to get the ball. Last time, a drive stop with interception, but they did move the ball. Let's see what happens here. This is Tripp. And Tripp almost breaks it. Across the 35-yard line, Van Tripp with a nice return. Stop by number 77, Jason Fink, after the 25-yard run back. And again, good field position for Arcola. And we'll see the coverage coming down here. They set up a little lane. He does a nice job of tripping up Van Tripp or he could have had a big gainer on that kickoff. They've done a nice job of returning the kick so far. That was They've Jason, had plenty of opportunity. Jason Fink for Carthage. Again, they come out in the eye in the slot. Matt Fuller right. gives it up the middle. Once more, it is Monahan who had that long run in the first quarter. Kevin Monahan. When you say Monahan in Arcola, you've got to really specify who. I think there have been six Monahans who played for Arcola. You know, the Purple Riders, you talk about uh, this is a team that's 13-0, but they've had several close calls, especially in the playoffs, Jack. First uh, first round, they go Arthur Leventon. Leventon scores the last touchdown to make it 14-13. They don't get the two-point conversion, so they lose. Then they go to Shenoa, two-point win there for Arcola. So Gordo, only a 6-0 game. Greenfield, they had a little distance in the semifinal by 10. So this is something that has not happened to Arcola, having uh, so much of a mountain to climb. Pullen, after the fake, he throws it complete to Colin Peterson, and Peterson eludes one tackle. As he beats Brian Jacob, finally Chad Boyer knocks him out of bounds, and Colin Peterson, who's showing his stuff, 28-yard reception and a good play on the play action by Arcola. You see the fake right here to Foran. And he gets the out route right here. Good move right here coming up, either a good move or a poor tackle. Nice gainer. Well, the other part of that, Mike, is maybe Carson is just kind of, or Cola rather, just kind of upset with the fact that uh, they had all those close games. Well, they're doing it the hard way if they're going to do oh, it. They First sure and 10 from the 34-yard line of the Purple Riders. And this time it's Foran, and Foran is met by Casey Conlon over there. Conlon tried to spring him, but it's Justin Livingston and Sid Hulls. It's Livingston, 5'11", 175 pounder, and Hulls coming up, so. Well, Sid Hulls is, two. excuse me, Mike, Sid Hulls is tough to run away from. He plays right over the center, which means he can go in either direction as effectively, and he's a tough guy to single block, and that's what the center Ryan McNamer has to do, and he hasn't been able to do the job thus far. Joe Marks, West Virginia native, spent most of his time in Arcola, longtime assistant. And the ball is fumbled on the snap, and Pullen covers up, but again, they're going backwards are the Purple Riders, back to the 38-yard line. As the uh, bad exchange between Pullen and the center, Ryan McNamer. So, after two, Scrimmage plays with losses. We're down to a third and 14 for the Purple Riders from the 38-yard line. And again, not a passing team. They've only thrown 82 times this year for a little over 500 yards and six touchdowns. Peterson to the right. And they look across the field and overshooting Monahan. The play was pretty well covered, even though he did overthrow that screen. Corey Whitaker coming up on the coverage, but Monahan. Uh, it's turned around the wrong way, and the ball was overthrown. It looks like they're going to go for it here. 
the 38. I mean, it wouldn't be much of a decision. You can see here a little overthrown, but coming back live as we look, got a long way to go. I mean, it'd be a lot different if it was only a four or five yard decision, but they've got 14 to pick up on fourth down. Single back backfield, and we get a whistle as the Purple Riders set up with the one back backfield just four, and then Carthage wants a timeout to talk this one over. Smart timeout right there by Jim Unruh. No doubt about it. They don't want to give them an opportunity to pick up this first down. They didn't have the defense call that, that they they probably were surprised at the formation as it transpired when they came out with those four receivers. So it's a good smart timeout. Well, let's check in on the injury to Adam Whitson. Steve Tucker, what can you tell us? Uh, on the play before anybody knew there was an injury, Adam Woodson uh, rolled out of bounds. They were attending to him out of out of bounds on the sideline and replaced him in the game. And then he almost got run over. His injuries to his hip, they took him for precautionary x-rays. Uh, but they think he may be back at least on the sideline before the game's over. All right, that's good news. Thanks a lot, Steve. 8.38 to go. Second quarter. Fourth down, 14 for Arcola. Barry Pullen, the quarterback number 12. Uphill, 24-point deficit here. Three quick touchdowns. Two in the first quarter, one to open the second by Carthage. And Arcola, if they're going to make something happen, they're going to have to start doing it rather soon. Here it is, fourth and 14. And again, the ace back. He's open. Looking across the middle, and he's got his man. It's Monahan, and Monahan gets the first down. Clutch play, Chad Boyer, Joey Dion. And they're on the stop after a 19-yard gain. Fine play by Arcola. All four receivers did what we call a vertical just down the seam. He's running right down the seam, splitting the difference between the safety and the corner. And he finds him right in that seam. Nice route and a real good throw. And it was right on the crown of the field. So a lot of times quarterbacks, especially if they're not used to playing on turf, will overthrow because the field slopes downward. Right there, was in the middle. He hit him perfectly. First down for it. And Bourne, who's been held in check, maybe a couple of yards. The left side of the line, Livingston, Patrick, and Hulls really kept uh, Foran in check. I guess that's one thing you could do when you're keying on one person. Monahan broke free, but Foran has been the big gun, 1,700 yards. Well, Monahan's been a sleeper all year from the standpoint of he's been blocking for Foran. He has 960 yards and 14 touchdowns, but if they're going to win the ball game, Foreign's got to do it today. Pickup of two, eighth play of the drive. Clock ticking, 7.45 to go. Arcola again problems with the snap, but this is Monahan, and Monahan down inside the 10, close to a first down. Sam Naylor, the cornerback, coming up to nail Monahan. One of the advantages of having a, a, the, the big tailback is they have a fullback. Here's the trap. You can see the guard kicking out right here. The linebackers are starting to slide outside with the fake to John Foran, and then they bring Kevin Monaghan back inside of the trap. Both decent size, especially for 1A, Foran 175. Monaghan, big kid, though. He's 6'3", 180. There's Kevin Monaghan. 960 yards, 14 touchdowns. The best part of that is a six, six-yard average. Measurements is a first and goal. Now the last time they threatened, they threw that play-action pass and had it picked off. But I'm sure at this point they're going to be trying to run it in. Well, except they've uh, used that pass to loosen up the defense. That's why I'm up here. Colin Peterson touchdown. Great throw. That's a very, very difficult throw. He picks that off. There's nobody there. He's gone. That was an excellent throw by Barry Pullen. Dion was on the coverage, but Pullen throwing and the freshman, Colin Peterson, catching. And for Colin Peterson, he's only caught one other pass. That was a 54-yard touchdown. This, his second reception, second touchdown for nine yards. And it wasn't even a play action. Very it's a dangerous throw, throwing it out there when there's nobody out there besides that corner. He picks that off, and he is gone. He's gone 95 yards the other way, but it was thrown well. They will go for two, will Arcola? And they give it to, Option. pitch it to Foran, and nope. Foran comes up short. Naylor once again to put the clamps on John Foran. But Arcola gets on the board, 7.27 to go. 
It is now Carthage 24 and Arcola 6. Mike Lederman along with Jack McInerney, Barb Albrecht, our Sports Channel crew in the truck. And you're looking at the man who scored the touchdown, the young man, Colin Peterson, Mr. Do-It-All. He also counts his teammates. He's a math major. Benjamin Jefferson, number 36. Joel Morehouse, number 33. And we know about Mr. Morehouse. Jefferson's another one of those scat backs at 5'9". They're back to receive this kick with 7.27 to go. Kick is short. Jefferson at his own 26. And Benjamin Jefferson across the 30. And he is stopped. Led by number 75 for Arcola, Valente Garcia. Backup lineman and place kicker. Trying to run the reverse here, just and they're really faking it because the wall is set up to the left. He fakes it right here, but they'll have none of it. Excellent penetration. He never got to the wall. Had he gotten to the wall, they would have had a play. Eight yard return, first and 10 now as the Carthage Blue Boys had their lead sliced. They're looking to go on the attack once again behind deceptive quarterback Joey Dion. Arcola scoring drive, almost four minutes, nine plays, 64 yards. Colin Peterson, the fine reception on an excellent throw by quarterback Barry Pullen. Great throw under those circumstances for a young man that hasn't thrown the ball an awful lot this year. Came up with the big throw. Well, if you're going to throw, these are perfect conditions under which to do it. And once again, the wing right, Morehouse. And he gets it on the second man, and Morehouse trying to turn the corner. This time, though, nice play coming up from the defensive back position. Matt Venhouse, 5'11", senior, and would not let Joel Morehouse, a little scat back, turn the corner. Again, let's take a look right here at the fake to Patrick that keeps the linebackers home. Second man through. He didn't really want to bounce it outside was forced to. Nice job by number 21, Matt Beanhouse, 5'11", 150 pound senior. Loss of two back to the 30. Second down and 12. Clock at 6.40 and ticking for the half. First quick hitter, it goes to Kenton Patrick, and Patrick into the secondary, comes up close to the 40-yard line. Stop. Big block there by Sid Hulls. And Colin Peterson coming up to make the stop, and we have called his name so many times. They have a nice front up there with Schumacher, Jefferson, and Hulls, the interior offensive line for Carthage. And this really has helped that backfield with their over 4,000 yards of rushing this year. Nine-yard gain, third and three. Again they go, once again, Kenton Patrick, and he's to midfield. That quick hitter stopped by Colin Peterson, Jeremy Schonkweiler. But a gain there of 11 more yards to the midfield stripe. Watch the right guard. They're blocking down, and it's just a, we call a rubble trap. The, the play side guard is trapping outside. They're, they're blocking everything down and bouncing it outside. Nice job of trapping right there by Jason Jefferson, number 6'3", six, six, 200 pounds. 13 carries, already 144 yards for Kenton Patrick. First down. And once again, it's Patrick. Now, once again, he breaks free. Once again, touchdown. 50 yards. Kenton Patrick, his second touchdown of the day, making his third touchdown of the day. I have trouble counting on the fingers of one hand. What a play. And you can see Valente Garcia holding up his arm. So what more do we have to do? I'll tell you what, you know, Patrick's doing a great job, but that offensive line is absolutely finely honed today. They're really blowing those people off the ball. Sid Hall, Schumacher, Jefferson, Whitaker, and Bergman doing a great job up front. 30 to 6, and the try for two. Once again, Ken and Patrick starring in his own series. Take a look at the touchdown here. Here's Patrick right here. Just a little option cutback. You'll see him cut back against the grain, and he's off. And the key to that is the great faking that's going on by Joey Dion and the rest of the backs and the linemen. Nice job by Kenton Patrick. And guess who? Here comes Patrick for the two-point conversion again. Good surge by the offensive line, and we have our score of 32-6. Something tells me this is not over. I just have this feeling. 
I just have this feeling. It could be 78 to 12, it could be 35 32, but I don't think, as you look at Joe Marks talking to John Foran, there's your story. Been all Carthage so far. Well, they've had. Uh, They've had eight years to stew about this one. Uh, they sure have. Come into the title game in 1988, and they were shut out 15 to nothing, and they have put 32 points on the board, and we're barely halfway through the second quarter. The other part of that is this team, the last three years, is 33 and two. That's not too shabby. I think you could have high expectations. Shoemaker to kick it, and he'll squib this one. Taken by Foran. And John Foran across the 35-yard line to the 36, brought down by a host of blue. And we'll take a look at uh, some of the kick coverage here as we'll look uh, pretty closely at Ryan Sullivan. Watch him. Ryan Sullivan puts his head down, puts his helmet on the football, makes the play on John Foran. Doesn't take Carthage long with that offensive line. They just, at this stage of the game, it's who they're giving the ball to, and it's all keyed by Joey Dion with his great faking of that misdirection offense. First and ten for Arcola. And four and across the 40. Little, little easier offense to. Uh, to defense because it basically is a is a tailback orientated offense whereas with uh, with Carthage any of those three backs can be handling the ball after all those fakes to the fullback and that misdirection so this is a much easier offense to to defense at this point there's a new fullback in there will Manna and Manna gets the call here and he gets short yardage he's going to check on Kevin Monahan Manna a 15-year-old sophomore, and I uh, wonder what that's all about. There, oh, I guess Monahan did switch his jersey to 32. Okay. Steve Adams, our public address announcer, helping us out. One of the tough reasons they're having running here is because they just cannot get Sid Hulls out of there at that nose. You can see him over the center, number 70, 6'2", 250. He's tough. Third down and four. As I speak. And look at four, and again, bottled up by number 70. The mismatch right there is Sid Hulls is 250 pounds. Ryan Mc McNamer, the center, is 5'6", 185. And they're trying to run in isolation so that they can get a double team by the guard in the center on Hulls, but good penetration now by the defensive tackles. 350 and counting, fourth and four. And we'll see if Peterson will punt it here. I imagine he will. And there is Peterson. Again, uh, got a 47-yarder off last time. And Brian Bruns calls it a fair catch, or did he? He was hit by Poland. Brian Bruns, I believe, made a fair catch call on the 27. And Barry Pullen on the kick coverage team uh, separated him from the ball, his senses, and maybe uh, separated his own team from 15 yards. I didn't see the, the signal, but even if he didn't, he still has to. There it is. Now, that is not a very good signal. They could almost call that an illegal signal, but he still has to give him room to catch the football, which he didn't. The officials will huddle. I thought that was an illegal signal, but I don't think that the penalty will be based on that. It will be based on the fact that he was not given room to catch the football. And that's a timing thing. The moment he touches it, you can hit him. But there, he hit him before the ball actually got there. Let's take a good look at it here. Not a good signal. You got to get your hand up and over your head and waving it. But you can see right there, contact is basically made almost at the same time, which and would be illegal. Pullen also looked like he was blocked into him somewhere. Fair catch, interference on, on white. Penalty is declined. That's First what the call blue. was. He was not allowed to catch the ball. And that's why they call it fair catch interference. Well, Brian Bruns dodged a bullet there, if you will. And 
the Blue Boys are in business again. They lead it 32 to 6, 3.15 to go here in the first half. And straight ahead this time, a unusually <laughs> a rare stop. A, a rare play and a rare stop of uh, Kenton Patrick and look like uh, Valente Garcia coming up to make the stop. Garcia, 5'10", 240, a senior. Get some more beef in there on the line. Although the problem is big catching these guys. Great execution. Great execution. Again, the wing tee right. And again, it's Kenton Patrick. And again, short yardage to the 34. Tony Douglas, number 65, again makes the stop. Joey Dion, you know, we said uh, that there's a long memory at Carthage for the shutout inflicted upon them by Arcola back at 88. And kidding around, said, well, how many of the ballplayers are left? Actually, Joey Dion was the water boy on that team. Well, we had talked about that. We couldn't figure out how was he on this field when they lost the last time. And we know he's a better student than that. So it, it couldn't have <laughs> been the fact that he hadn't been doing well academically. He was the water boy he on that. The, he was the team manager. Don Cook talking to Joe Marks on the Arcola sideline there. And Joe wants uh, uh, either a lunch order or something there. After discussion. <laughs> Now John Cook is calling one of the other officials over and we'll see what this is all about. If he joined us late, there's the man, Kenton Patrick, three touchdowns. He scored from 81, he scored from three, and then he scored from 50. All rushes. Joey Dion with a sneak and uh, four touchdowns and four two-point conversions. It has been a story of the... Blue Boys from Carthage today, and we've still got 2.20 to go here in the first half. When you run this kind of an offense, the hub of this offense is the quarterback and the fullback. They have to be solid football players to make this offense go, and it's quite obvious that they've got quite a hub here with Joey Dion and Kenton Patrick. He is a tough man to follow, the sleight of hand. Watch him handle the ball. You saw those statistics passing 17 for 41. We told you he doesn't have to pass much, but nine of those 17 passes have gone for touchdowns. Forward coming off the uh, field. Yeah, it looks like we get a get a uh, check of equipment, or maybe there's some blood there for John Ford, and they've got to take him out, well, patch him up, and clean off the blood. And that's that's a recent rule over in high school. And you can see that left forearm's got some blood on it. So Foran will come out. Third and nine. Covington on the sweep. Covington. Dennis Covington gets the first down. Looked like he was trapped. Monahan makes the stop after an 11 yard gain and watch him go. Nice misdirection again, starting out with Patrick, and they come back with, with Dennis Covington following in behind those big linemen and just cutting back for the big first down. And you can see with this offense why all three of those running backs have over 1,000 yards. This is Morehouse, and Morehouse sweeping left. Eludes two tacklers, Douglas knocks him out of bounds. If I am a Purple Rider and I am alone on defense and I see one of those two guys coming at me, I don't know where to grab. Well, one of the things, both of these guys are low to the ground at 5'4 and 5'6. It's one thing, you're not going to be run over. So you're just going to have to break down, as we say, and hold your ground and grab onto something. The first down story. Clock at 2.05. And here is Kenton Patrick fighting his way through, brought down by a host of purple. Casey Conlon leading the tackle. But again, they'll move the chains. And again, the offensive line of Carthage is doing a great job with their blocking scheme. They're doing trapping, they're blocking down and kicking out, they're trapping onside, play side, doing a lot of different schemes for this Arcola defense. First down again, and Morehouse, flags are thrown, and that's been a rarity today. Morehouse lost a two as he tried to go wide left. I think that's only our second flag so far. 
And we get a hold against the offense. Again, so. counter misdirection with Patrick and one going one way and Morehouse coming back the other, getting all those big linemen out in front of that little back. Nice job here, though, by the Purple Riders of cutting it off. You say good size. They are. Carthage, they go 220, 250, 220, 200, and 185 across the front. Here's Don Cook. We are holding blue first out. So that will set the Purple Riders back 10 yards, which the way they've been going might give them more field to work with, Jack. Well, at, at first and 22, these are the ones that uh, they pay those coaches the big bucks for. Do they? I don't think so. As the coach of Oak Park River Forest. Counter. Oh, here we go, the counter in Morehouse, and Morehouse tripped up nicely by Matt Venhaus. Gets about six yards. Again, no big rush to come back to throw the ball, just running the misdirection counter. And they pick up uh, a nice gain. Again, good blocking at the point of attack. Sam Naylor comes in with the play from Jim Unruh. 1-10 to go. First half. And it goes this time to Covington, and Covington down inside the 30 to the 25. Dennis Covington. 19 yards, and we've still got a minute, too. And again, Patrick is the key to fake to him, draws everybody. You can see everybody drawn into him, and there goes Dennis Covington. Those linebackers got suckered in on Patrick, and Covington was off to the races. First and 10 from the 25, final minute here. And look out, it's Morehouse, one man to beat, and Colin Peterson makes the stop inside the 10. Misdirection counter. Coming off that series where the last play was to fake to uh, Covington and Patrick did the same thing and they come back with Morehouse. Really a tough, tough offense to stop. Colin Peterson again all over the field, the freshman making the play and the clock now ticking with 45 seconds to go. First and goal from the eight. Morehouse on the right and this time straight up. Touchdown number four, Kenton Patrick. Hard to believe that this is only the, the end of the first half. They are dominating, dominating that scoreboard and dominating this game. A lot of days, folks, in purple, led by that man, uh, Joe Marks. Joe's got to be wondering, what can we do? They just It's not so much his offense doesn't do anything. They never get the ball. This is true. Carthage is just a, a well-oiled machine. Try for two. Patrick, not this time. Will this be the momentum that will carry them through the second half? Casey Conlon I don't stopping think so. Patrick Short. Here's the touchdown. Again, Patrick just on a great job up front. Picks up another touchdown. And then they finally stop him. I just think he's exhausted here. Now he's got to play defense, too, you know. And be on the kickoff team. Eight-yard run, his fourth touchdown of the afternoon, which is only half over. And the lead is now 38 to 6. There he is. He's had a career day. 22 touchdowns coming in. He's now got 26. And we'll give you his rushing numbers because they uh, have approached 200 yards just for the half. Well, all of these backs complement each other. They all have over 1,000 yards, but each one complements the other by the way they play this game with the misdirection play. Tripp and Venhouse. Tripp will take it at his own 20. 30. Down to the 35 goes Van Tripp. Brought down by number 77, Jason Fink again, who's been the first man down on special teams all afternoon, all morning long. The last shot certainly was a Thanksgiving now we profile. Have a couple of players down. Van Tripp for Arcola and another one of the Purple Riders. There's Kenton Patrick, 200 yards, 
221 on 19 carries. And, you know, normally we're saying this in the at the uh, post game, talking about a situation like that. And here he is getting those kind of stats in the first half. Well, Tripp, and there's one other player down as well, also from the Arcola side. They've already had Adam Woodson taken off a linebacker with a hip problem. There is Van Tripp. We'll try to uh, find out who that second player is who is just behind Tripp as both are being attended to. I think that's number 30. Now that's Tripp. And that's Pullen, the quarterback, number 12. He's being helped to his feet. We don't need that. See what we can find here. There's Pullen, right There's front number uh, number 12. He, he gets, gets hit in the back, yeah. it looks like. And Tripp might have gotten a stinger because he may have... He may have hit someone's knee or helmet. But Pullen is uh, off to the sidelines. And they're uh, talking to Corey Logan, who's the backup quarterback, so he's going to be coming in at least for the final 30 seconds. Logan, 5'7", 135 pound junior. He's only thrown one pass all season, that being incomplete. And I don't think he's going to throw a second one here. Not not now. Not trailing 38 to 6, coming into a game with 30 seconds to go. But Van Tripp is still down. As a concern, Joe Marks looks on. Remember, there's lots more football coming. Immediately following this game, we'll have the two-way championship. Jim Blaney and Bill Gorley will bring that one to you. Hampshire and Moequa Central. And then this afternoon, Jack and I will be back. Spring Valley Hall, their first trip to coin a perennial finalist here. They were runners-up last year. And following that one, Providence, the big machine of Matt Seffner against Springfield Griffin. And tomorrow, starting at noon, we've got the big schools, Maine South Mount Carmel, and then Wheaton Warrenville South against the juggernaut of Naperville Central. You know, it's interesting. Naperville Central, in the last 10 years, is, I believe, the only team that started out ranked number one has been able to hold that ranking going right into the state finals. So they've played under tremendous pressure and have done a great job. Well, there is still uh, a lot of work to be done here, but there's a lot of concern down on the 35-yard line where Van Tripp, 5'10", senior, would run back that kickoff, still is down. A good shot there of Sid Halls, who's had a great game, 6'2", 250-pound senior, number 70. Shot of Jim Unruh. You can save your state final program Proud tradition too, at Arcola. As you look at Carthage, building a nice tradition too, year. and that young man Sid Hulls right in front is a big part of this year's. To get more apparel. Well, you just hate to say it. You don't mean to sound trite, but you don't want to see something like this. The game is uh, certainly a lopsided one to now, but you don't want to see anyone hurt. And I think one of the problems could be that, you know, the ambulance had just left about five to seven minutes ago with a player, and they might not have the ambulance to take him off the field. Smoking is not allowed in the stands of Hancock Stadium. Smoking areas. They might. They might call the half right here. Have been set aside for this purpose. Please ask an usher for assistance. Well, they've, they've got some paramedics out there now, I believe. And let's check, let's check uh, out with Steve Tucker. And Steve, what can you tell us? Well, first of all, um, Ken Patrick's first half, his 221 yards, is already a rushing record for a Class A title game. The old record was 218 by Jay Wessler from uh, Triope, and that was set in 1975, so that record stood for 20 years. The overall record in any class, 308 yards by Paul Bauer of Seneca in 1990 in the two-way title game. Uh, Kevin Patrick already has 221 yards. And unofficially, uh, the Blue Boys have run for 410 yards in the first half. All right. Steve, I don't mean to interrupt you. Thanks a lot. They are letting the time run down. 
And that will be the end of the first half, and they will attend to Van Tripp right there on the field. But uh, time has run out. Both teams will go to the locker rooms. They will attend to the injured player. We will take a break here, and uh, we hope to have some good news for you about the young man, and we will recap the first half after this. 38-6, to six, it's been all Carthage. Halftime at Hancock Stadium, the Class 1A Championship. It has been all Carthage, right from, as they say, the get-go. The story, Kenton Patrick, 221 yards on 19 carries, four touchdowns. His first came on an 81-yard run on the first possession for the Blue Boys. He followed it up with a two-point conversion for an 8-0 lead. He followed it up with a three-yard run and another two-point conversion. After the first quarter, it was 16-0. Joey Dion, the quarterback, with a sneak, made a 22 to nothing, and Dennis Covington with a two-point conversion, 24. Arcola finally got on the board in the second quarter. Colin Peterson, a nice nine-yard hookup, a pass from quarterback Barry Pullen. The run failed. It was 24 to six, and then Kenton Patrick again, a 50-yard run, followed up with a two-point conversion, and then another eight-yard run as time was winding down in the first half. And for once, uh, the run failed, so we have a 38-6 lead with the Carthage Blue Boys ahead of the Purple Riders of Arcola. A more immediate concern right now, as you look down on the field, Van Tripp of Arcola, injured on a kickoff return or following uh, Patrick's last touchdown. Still, uh, the ambulance is out there, still has not been moved. Earlier, Adam Whitson, a linebacker for Arcola, was taken off, apparently with a hip problem. Uh, this appears to be uh, more serious. We have not seen Van Tripp moving. We don't know how the injury uh, occurred, although he was the ball carrier on the kickoff. And right now, Coach Joe Marks and several other concerned people are attending to the young man. They're going to put him on the spine board and take him uh, off to the hospital. Jack, uh, that's the, the situation. And again, it is just a horrible sight to see in the midst of all this pageantry and what should be fun. Well, unfortunately, this had to happen, but I will say this, that they have tremendous medical staff down here between the two teams and also Illinois State. And you can see right now they're going to strap him on the board. Now, oftentimes what happens uh, is that they do an awful lot of this. If there's any danger whatsoever of any kind of a uh, head injury or spinal injury, that they will strap him on the board for precautionary measures until they get him to the hospital. They won't take off any of the gear, the helmet. They will not remove the helmet, the shoulder pads, anything until they get him to the hospital. And uh, they keep him uh, pretty well strapped down. Yeah, the paramedics are working on the left on the uh, on the head. They're going to check that out and, and uh, anchor the head. Another paramedic unit has come as well. They're, again, one of the units uh, that's always here had just left for the hospital when the other injury occurred. So that also delayed the time. There you see some of the Illinois State medical staff, which complements the high school team's medical staff, working as well. Uh, they have they have put Van Tripp on the spine board. They have anchored uh, the upper portion of his body as well. You can see that's his helmet there. You know, one thing that happens, this playing on this turf, when you go down, if you're snapped at all, when your head can pop on that surface, and uh, that's oftentimes how kids get hurt, is that, uh, you know, this, this does not give. Steve Tucker, what can you tell us down on the sideline? First thing with Van Tripp, they said that he hit his head on that collision down there, felt a little bit of tingling in his legs, and there was no way they were going to take any chance. Uh, they're going to um, bring him to the hospital. Steve? Can you say if he's conscious at this point? Yeah, he was conscious. Okay. His eyes were open. Um, as far as some of their other injuries, uh, their quarterback, uh, John Foran, seems to be okay. Adam Woodson, they said, could have a dislocated hip, but he's comfortable, and he's at the hospital. Okay, Steve Tucker, thanks for that report. Stay on the sidelines. It's almost uh, much like a mash unit today over on the Arcola side. We hope uh, everyone is okay. Van Tripp is being taken to the hospital now. As Steve Tucker said, he is conscious. He is talking. They are taking precautions. 
We will take a break right here. Laura Oakman and the Sports Channel Report will give us some information when we come back. And then we'll rejoin you here at Hancock Stadium. Back at Hancock Stadium, a beautiful day here in Normal, Illinois. Mike Lederman with Jack McInerney. The first half story, all Carthage. As you can see, they started with an 81-yard run, and they didn't stop until the first half just about ended. 38-6 to over the Purple Riders of Arcola. These two teams meeting in the championship as they did in 1988, seven years ago. This time, the result has been much, much different to this point. Let's take a look at the first half, Jack, and the whole story, or most of it, has been the uh, the team play of of uh, the Carthage Blue Boys, but it's been manifested in four touchdowns from uh, Kenton Patrick. Well, really, it really has been his highlight film this first half. All right, let's He's done it. everything, a, a record. All right, here it is, the first drive of the game for for Carthage, and Patrick, number 40 throw, will be coming right at you. He's coming out right at you on a trap play, bounces it outside, and uh, now it's a foot race. And you, as you can see, he's a strong inside runner, and uh, he doesn't have tremendous speed, but enough to make an 81-yard run right here. And uh, this was the start of a tremendous record-breaking first half for Caton Patrick. Well, they don't like to kick on the conversions, and uh, here's a good reason why. They go for two, and, and they don't. And they don't like to rest him either. No. Here's Caton Patrick again, right after that long run, picking up the two-point conversion. And let's not forget he plays defense as well. After the uh, after the next series, Patrick, as he culminated a 12-play, 82-yard drive, this time from three yards away. And again, just cutting back against the green, outstanding blocking up front by Shoemaker, Hulls, and Jefferson. Second quarter now on the first series, Joey Dion, the quarterback, an absolute marvel when it comes to handling the football, this time kept it himself. And just to take a little pressure off of Patrick, he comes in behind those big linemen inside. You can see the sneak right here, wedge blocking, all those blue boys forcing Arcola into the end zone for the touchdown for Joey Dion. Led by six foot two, 250 pound left guard, number 70. Underneath that pile and moving it is Sid Hulls. Now they, uh, more activity. This is Dennis Covington. This is on a two-point conversion. No, no, this is, let's take a look right here. Uh, Arcola did get on the board. A fine pass here from Barry Pullen to the freshman, Colin Peterson. And this is a tough pass out in the flat. This is a make or break. He either catches and scores, or it's picked off, and it's an interception for a score going the opposite way. Outstanding throw, dangerous call, but the result was very positive. Well, the uh, try for two missed and uh, didn't stop Carthage. They came right back again and once Guess again, who? yeah, Kenton Patrick. Another touchdown for him on his record-breaking first half, and he's not finished. Nope. He had a 50-yard TD run. That one uh, followed up with a two-point conversion that he also carried on. And then with 30-some-odd seconds left in the first half, another drive ended with an eight-yard touchdown run by Patrick. The run failed because they didn't give it to Patrick, probably. <laughs> and uh, we are at 38 to 6. We've had a number of injuries. Uh, we hope none terribly serious. The statistics tell the story. Look at the total yardage on the Carthage side. And that's a, that's a game yardage for 95% for of the teams in the state right now. That would be the end of the game yardage, and here it is, the first half. All of it. Every single yard on the ground. 15 first downs, and they all came rushing. Is that a title of a book? Well, it's interesting. Again, in our pregame, we talked about the tremendous experience that Carthage has with eight starters having started for three years. Right, and they were knocked off last year by Harden Calhoun, a perennial champion. Of course, Harden Calhoun won it last year. Uh, Sterling Newman won it last year, and, and they beat Sterling Newman this year on the way to the finals. So um, this is a seasoned team. This they, is, this they know how to win, Mike. They've won 33 ball games in three years, and they've only got two losses. So experienced and poised, all of those things, and that brings them right up to the state championship game, and this is why they're playing so well. The officials number, the official numbers now, Kenton Patrick, 17 rushes, 216 yards with a long of 81 and the four touchdowns. Joel Morehouse, the halfback, 10 for 103. Joey Dion, the quarterback, three carries, 53 yards, including a 50-yard scamper that set up another touchdown. And Dennis Covington, five for 44, and he's got a two-point conversion. There you see Jim Unruh, 
he was a young coach back in 1988, and he said he didn't know how tough it was to get to the title uh, as a young coach. He knows it now, but let me tell you, he's got everything going his way. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, I can't imagine what he must have said at halftime. He, probably everybody just said Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. Well, it probably starts with overconfidence. Let's go down to Jim Unruh. Steve Tucker's got him. Steve? How you doing, Coach? First thing I have to say, people pointed out that in two appearances in the uh, title game, your team had been shut out both times. I don't think you have to worry about that today. Off offensively, we're playing very well. Our offensive line is opening up some tremendous holes, and uh, our backs are running hard. Over 400 yards in the first half, and I know that gives your team over 5,000 rushing yards for the season. I mean, I know they owe the, uh, the linemen uh, probably dinner when you guys get back home. I'll tell you what, you would think those backs would get them dinner and what have you, but uh, wow, I didn't know we had that many yards uh, out here today. I knew we had a lot, but uh, uh, you know, this, this team, it's, it's been on a journey for three years now to get to a state championship football game, and uh, it's great to be here and great to be on top right now. Anything surprise you in the first half of the ease with which you uh, you've been able to run the ball? Well, we've been we've been able to run the ball very well all year long. I guess I guess it's a surprise whenever you're playing a state championship game to be able to move the ball. Last time we played here, I don't know if we ever hardly got a first down. So it's it's, it's a great feeling right now to be able to move the ball. And uh, something else, you can't overlook your defense. You've held a, a real high-powered team to only six points in the first half. Right, our, our defense has been playing outstanding in the playoff games. In fact, a lot of times our offense outshadows or outshines our uh, defense, but uh, you know our defense has been solid here today. Uh, you gonna change anything here for the second half? Or? No, we're not gonna change a thing. The one thing we always go into the halftime, no matter what the score, we ask the kids what the score is, and they say 0-0, zero, zero, and uh, that's the way we take take every game, every halftime. Uh, you gotta play it like the game 0-0 zero, zero at halftime. We gotta come out and be ready to play the second half. Okay, one last question. Uh, Kent Patrick, four touchdowns, and he's already broken the 2A state record for rushing in the title game. The 1A state record? Wow. You know, uh, you know, I think we're so well balanced. That, that, you know, Kenton Patrick's one heck of a uh, one heck of a running back. He's broken some long plays, and uh, you know, he'll be the first one to give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They're opening up some tremendous holes today, and hopefully that continues in the second half. Thanks a lot, Coach. Back up to you, Mike. All right, Steve, with Jim Unruh, and uh, we will be back for the second half. We'll see what adjustments our Cole has been able to make. Right now, a commercial break. start the second half Arcola will receive before we start the second half Arcola came out late again if you're joining us late in this 38 to 6 shellacking that Carthage is putting on Arcola right now uh, several Arcola players were injured in the first half two have been taken to the hospital Adam Whitson the linebacker possible dislocated hip he is comfortable he is fine uh, the more serious concern right now with the uh, trip the kick returner as well as the flanker, Van Tripp, uh, who was injured on the kickoff return right the uh, right before the half, and he was uh, motionless for quite some time, said he felt some tingling in his legs. He was taken off. We certainly hope it's okay. Meanwhile, let's take a look at some more of the action from the first half. And, and when you look at, you talk about small schools play big football, you watch the way quarterback Joey Dion handles the ball. He is incredible with his sleight of hand. He really does a great job of fake, and you can see right here, all the linebackers you can see the amount of people that are suckered into the fullback and that was just a play action pass that wasn't even the, the misdirection of the normal wing tee and he gets knocked off and moves outside for a big 50 yard gain and he's one step away here from breaking another 30 yards for, for a touchdown. This was a 50 yard scamper at the end of the first quarter It led to Dion's one yard sneak at the beginning of the second quarter. Well, very interesting. If you do uh, want to talk about some history, of course, as we said, we're going back to 1988. Arcola fumbled the ball eight times, lost seven fumbles to Carthage. Carthage still lost 15 to nothing to Arcola. In one play, in one play, Kenton Patrick gained more yardage than the entire team did back in 1988. They were held to 74 yards complete and were shut out. There is Joe Marks. Obviously a concerned man for his players as much as for the result of this game, certainly more so. Uh, 
again, what do you tell a team at halftime when you're down 38 to six? And uh, he said to me before the game, I, when I said, you know, there's 5,000 yards of offense in your opposition, he said, well, you know, I don't know what kind of competition they play. Now we know. Boy, he sure does. And again, this would be a situation where there's not a heck of a lot of adjustments you can make. It comes down to fundamentals. And uh, Carthage has just been putting on a clinic. I mean, if there's a somebody at home that has their VCR running that wants to learn how to run the wing tee, a coach, for example, you're getting a clinic today on how to run it. Shoemaker will kick it off. There is Colin Peterson at the top of your screen. Matt Venhouse is in now to return the kick. With Van Tripp injured, he is at the bottom. And Foran takes it on the 30. And John Foran, the tailback, gets some room, brings it close to midfield, and this will be the best starting field position that Arcola has had since this game began. Brian Jacob, number 21, on the stop, a 17-yard return, and we are underway here in the second half. Again, what do you tell, Jack? I know you're never down 38-6 to six at halftime, but if you were, what do you tell your kids? Well, you're, first of all, you're here, and... Uh, 99% of the other teams in the state aren't. They're watching it on TV. You play for pride, you try and do the best you can, and try and play a second half game. It's zero to zero thinking for the second half. Let's go out and do the best we can. And they give it to Monahan, and Monahan gets four yards across the 50. He's brought down by the big line, led by number 22, Justin Livingston, number 55, Jason Jefferson, 6'3", 200 pounder. There is Monahan. He changed his jersey in the middle of the stream, and he is now wearing 32. Over there, a look at Justin Livingston, 5'11", 175-pound senior, and third place on the team with tackles. There is Kevin Monahan. There is Barry Pullen. He was shaken up on the same kickoff where Tripp was injured. He is back at quarterback. And this is Monahan on the quick hit, and he doesn't get much on second down, maybe a yard. Sid Hulls in there again on the stop. Kevin Monahan. A yard gain. Looks like something they did not do in the first half. A little outside veer right here, you can see. And they're pulling the uh, pulling the guard to get out there. Casey Coglin, a six foot, 220 pound senior out in front of him. And uh, Carthage was up to it. Van House split left. Peterson in the slot. In the I formation. And trying to counter and not buying the fact of <laughs> find the fake at all Christian Boyer number 78 and that put the kibosh on whatever Arcola was trying to do they're trying to run an, an, an option coming back weak side with the guard pulling and one of the reasons they're doing this is they have not been able to handle the defensive front of Carthage and so now they're trying to make some things happen by running the option the first couple plays have been options and really have not done too well with them. Once again, Carthage holds on fourth and eight. Colin Peterson, the freshman, will kick it to Morehouse. And Brian Bruns. There is Morehouse, number 33. High snap. Good kick. Get there. Takes a terrific roll inside the 10. And they'll uh, go on a little Easter egg hunt for that one and down it at the eight yard line. Well again, now we're gonna see the ball control offense of Carthage. And uh, this is obviously very bad field position, but a key will be right here if the Purple Riders from Arcola can hold them. Thus far they have not been able to. And uh, Carthage is a ball control offense with three outstanding backs, all with over a thousand yards of rushing. 44 yard punt, no return. Joey Dion will bring the backfield up. Patrick Kenton, Dennis Covington, Joel Morehouse. Names we've been mentioning quite a bit. Second man. Second through. man once again. And that is Covington. And Dennis Covington across the 10-yard line. Valente Garcia. There he is. The senior makes the stop. Well, having an outstanding fullback like Kenton Patrick draws again those linebackers inside with whatever fake you give him initially. That draws the, the linemen and the linebackers to him, and that's the reason for the second back and for the misdirections oftentimes. They've been running off the wing tee with the wing to the right. On second down. Again, the second man through Morehouse. He's broken this one once. Can Peterson knock him out? He does. Colin Peterson, but up across the 30-yard line, good for more than first down yardage. A 23-yard scamper by little Joel Morehouse, five foot four, 160 pounds.
Again, it all starts with the fake to Patrick right up the middle. Watch the linebackers freeze a little bit. It allows the backside to block down. And off goes Joey, Joey Morehouse. Had 1,200 yards in the regular season with 14 touchdowns. Again, he breaks the containment. So first down from the 33, and Kenton Patrick. He's broken this one twice, and he gets across the 40, gain of seven. Garcia again up the middle to make the stop. Again, there's the trap, quick little trap right inside. And basically, he trips over his own man, but you can see he's a, he's a mule. He's carrying them down the field, eight-yard pickup. You see, you see what Carthage is doing. They run the water bugs left and right, and they run the big guy up the middle, and they've got Houdini at quarterback. It's all working today for Carthage. Under eight minutes to go. Third quarter. And Covington, a couple more yards, close to first down yardage. To about the 43. In our inside fake to Patrick and giving the second back. And you can see right there, Jason Jefferson, the guard, pulling around 6'3", 200 pounder. About a yard shy of a first down on third down. Morehouse to the right, the two tight ends. And Dion gets it. Close to midfield. Pick up of six, he needed one. First down, Carthage. Let's watch the line, line play right here. You can see that surge. They're driving the, the purple riders off the line of scrimmage. And that's the, been the key all day long for the backs from Carthage. That offensive line has really been the story. They like to run it left behind Hulls and Bergman, but everybody's been getting into the act today. First down from the 49-yard line of Carthage. Second wide pass open, wide, and open. wide open is Naylor. And had he not lost his balance he was gone Sam Naylor caught his sixth pass three of them have been for touchdowns and this one down to the 29 yard line well here's the play action again you can see everybody is coming in on Patrick and he is wide open this is the only reason he's only thrown 41 passes nine of them have been for touchdowns for 500 yards well the first completion today for Joey Dion not that he's needed it this one goes for 22 yards, a first down, and... You can see how wide open he is right there. Uh, he was just amazed, and back we come to live action, and Kenton Patrick inside the 20 to the 16. Just ripping off huge chunks of turf. Matt Venhaus finally making the stop. Kenton Patrick running like Jim Brown today. At the 17-yard line, 21, Matt Venhaus made the stop. Well, they're, they're really handling the... Those down linemen from Arcola. You can't say enough about that offensive line from Carthage. They are just doing a tremendous job. 6.15 to go, third quarter. 38 to 6 for the boys in blue. This time it's Covington. And Dennis Covington gets a few more yards inside the 15. Before he's met by Casey Conlon. There he is, Conlon, number 79, 6'1", 220. I wonder if he grew after he originally got that shirt. Hey, that's the macho look, Coach. You should know that. So, either that or, you know, Carthage has been undressing Arcola all afternoon. Either that or somebody's had the dryer on heat too long. John Shoemaker, the center, brings him out. Second and seven. Dion gives it off. Covington, a rare tackle for loss nicely done led by John Foran for Arcola as well as Tony Douglas the outstanding linebacker you can see they always have linemen out there pulling on the misdirection and right there Tony Douglas 5'11 235 pound senior 100 over 100 tackles coming into this ball game their leading defensive player a rare third and long for Carthage. Reverse counter inside. And look out. Morehouse. Touchdown, Blue Boys. Joey Dion, the quarterback, gave him a block two there, Jack. And look at this. Joe Morehouse gets into the act. He gets a touchdown. And we're into the 40s. 
Again, tremendous misdirection with the fake to Patrick and then coming back with the counteraction coming back weak side. This is really they're putting on a clinic of the wing tee. And of course, Jim Unruh, son of Paul Unruh, who ran the wing tee at West Chicago and Moline. They run it to perfection. Well, they'll try for one here. John Shoemaker with the kick and right through the uprights. So the two teams will come back up the field with the score. 45 to 6. Carthage, Carthage, Carthage. There is Joel Morehouse, 15 yards, culminating a 92-yard drive. 10 plays, 4 minutes and 47 seconds, so they can explode, they can grind it out. And Carthage with a 45 to 6 lead. Venhouse and Peterson. That's Peterson at the top of your picture. Shoemaker to kick it off. Squibbing this one as he has most of the afternoon. Picked up again by John Foran at the 30, and Foran has some room. And Foran to the 45-yard line. Again, good field position for Arcola. A 16-yard return brought down by Brian Hanks of Carthage. Here's the touchdown. Look at this play act back and forth right here. They fake to Caden Patrick up the middle. Fake to uh, Covington. Covington gives the ball back to Morehouse coming outside. A great job by Joey Dion down the field right there, number four blocking. And there's another touchdown for Carthage. Well, Barry Pullen trying to get something going here. He's got Peterson in the slot. Monahan and four in other backs. And it goes to four and again, short yardage, maybe two. Number 32, Kevin Monahan was the ball carrier for the Purple Check Raiders. it, it is Monahan with the ball. Credit that tackle to 44, Kenton Patrick. And there is Kenton Patrick, who uh, did just about everything except sell popcorn. He comes off the field after making that tackle. Uh, you think he's tired? No, he's not. No, oh, he's pumped. Holding Monahan to a one-yard gain. Pullen looking. And in and out of the hands of the receiver. And that would be uh, Alan Lathrop. Short pass should have been caught. Lathrop has averaged 24 yards a catch. He hasn't had a lot of catches, only six of them for three touchdowns. And in this kind of ball game, the uh, Carthage doesn't have much to uh, to worry about, so they can be sent and putting a lot of pressure on, uh, on Pullen. Third and nine, and this time they turn it, and they pitch it to Forrest. And four, and this is a play that uh, didn't work last time on third down. It works fine here. First down yardage. Chad Boyer knocking four and out of bounds. And four, it's best run of the afternoon. Well, it's, it is the, no, it's just afternoon, Jack. Little counter option right here. And Pullen pitches the ball at the last minute. Good downfield block right there. That's, that's a great job of blocking to spring him loose for that first down. And they haven't had a lot of those today. You know, Jack, that Carthage line is so quick. As, as, as the quarterback's making his pivot, they're on him. But it's first down now on the 41-yard line. And Pullen with the quick hitter up to Monahan, and Kevin Monahan gets five. Inside the 40 to the 37. Well, I think at this stage, our is going to stick with their regular game plan. They're, they're just going to run the clock and try and get on the board and have a make a decent run at it here the second half, but they're not going to be throwing the ball all over the place because that score could really start inflating. The yardage nearly 500 as Sid Hulls comes out for Carthage. Second and five, Pullen shoots it quickly, and this time it's Peterson for a first down and more to the 25, still going, and a nice play by the freshman once again. You can see just a regular cup pass thrown the out. Nice catch and a real good effort here at the end of the run. See right there, it bounces off two, bounces off third. Boyer finally brings him down with some help. So first and 10, Arcola threatening on the 25 of Carthage. Again, the quick hit and not much there for Monahan. Trying to run that trap up inside. Coming off of the uh, 
fakes of the option earlier and just cannot spring Kevin Monahan. Corey Whitaker on the stop, the linebacker. No game. Third quarter clock at 2.15. Van House to the right. Pullen to throw it. Looking for Van House, but way out of bounds, overshoots him. I think he was waiting for him to run an out and up, and he just ran an out and forgot to do the up. Sam Naylor on the coverage. Let's take a look right here. He runs the out right there, and he's supposed to run an up because he threw an up route. Peterson got tangled up with uh, what looked like Corey Whitaker there. No flag was thrown, even though it was well beyond the bump circle. 2.04 to go, and it's third down and 10. Single back backfield. Whitaker, uh, then how splits, and again, the ball was overthrown as they were trying to go on a little flat route on the left side to Monahan, and he had big Schunkweiler in front of him, but nothing happened. Barry Pullen got a lot of pressure there. Wasn't able to set up the screen. You can see he wants to set up, but he never has a chance to get his feet set right there with the pressure he's getting. He just throws the ball incomplete because he was being played right there also. Christian Boyer in his face. Pullen's numbers. The one pick, no touchdowns here on fourth and 10. Pullen, straight drop. And he's got his man. Complete, brought down by Naylor, but short of a first down as Lathrop gains eight, but not enough. Here it is, straight drop back pass, cup protection, throws the ball well, but usually when we're on, when you're on fourth down, you gotta make it enough. He runs that route just a little short, another yard or two, he would pick up the first down. Kind of throws it off balance, but delivers the ball. You can see he runs it right out of bounds. I don't think he knew exactly where he was supposed to be. So the Purple Riders give up the ball on downs. The Blue Boys take over with a minute 53. And they go up the middle again, keeping the ball on the ground as they have done so well. In a new formation there, Mike. Yeah, they, they brought the uh, power eye. I think they feel as if they don't need the misdirection anymore. Just gonna chew up clock and Patrick limping a little bit. I don't know if that's cramps, exhaustion. Now they might go back to the wing T look. Yes, they do. They send Morehouse to the right on second down. And once again, it's Covington, and Covington gets a couple of yards, brought down by Tony Douglas and Matt Venhouse. Under a minute to go. It's been a real clinic here. Carthage has done, done an outstanding job of running this wing tee. And, and an awful lot of credit obviously goes to the backs. They're well publicized with all the yards and touchdowns, but the people that never get the credit but really are the ones that do all the performing are the offensive linemen. And they're all seniors except for the center shoemaker. And again, the inside counter handoff, and this will be short of a first down. Bringing in the punting team. The what? I know. In fact, most of them were standing on the sideline there, and they were kind of stunned. Coach the old punt team. Well, the punter is Colin Granger, averages 32 yards a kick. There he is. And we will see him for the first time. Ben House back on his 45 yard line, but they won't get this one off because that's the end of the third quarter. They will change sides. We will have a commercial break here with the score of the 1A championship. Carthage 45, Arcola 6. We'll be back. There's a man of the hour, Joey Dion, the quarterback. He also plays on special teams, plays on defense, and probably does magic shows in the offseason, the way he handles that ball. He might have. I thought I recognized him driving the bus up here, but I wasn't sure. 
the first punt of the afternoon. And fair caught by Van House, who juggles it right at the 50-yard line. And uh, he was covered over there by uh, Livingston. 27-yard punt, the first time of Probably had a little rusty leg because Granger hadn't been out there much. There is Joe Marks. Again, succeeded the legendary veteran coach of 29 years, Steve Thomas. And there is the man who's had it all his way, Jim Unruh, the coach of Carthage. It was Thomas who beat Unruh's Blue Boys back a few years ago, and Unruh has not forgotten as foreign straight ahead again short yardage again Corey Whitaker on the stop well in a ball game like this the opportunity uh, for other players to get a game is, is uh, obviously very high and uh, this makes a lot of parents and fans happy that everybody gets the opportunity to play in the state championship game we'll try to keep track of them for you as they enter gain of three second down Foreign on the pitch. Tries to go left, and he will be three yards short of the first down before he is driven out of bounds by a lot of blue, led by Jeremy Schunk. Uh, check it. Uh, look like Swearinger. You can see it's Monahan out in front of him. Does a nice job there. And uh, picks up five yards. Number 21. Matt Beanhouse, 5'11", 150-pound senior, leading pass receiver for Arcola. Jason Jefferson coming out for Carthage, getting a big hand. Third and five. Back to pass is Pullen. And look at the defense over there by Sam Naylor on the corner. On Peterson. Naylor really nailed him on that one, just on the out, just the ball touched, he got him. Take a look at Naylor right here, 5'10", 135 pounds. Hits like he's about 195 pounds. Welcome to the varsity, freshman. Right here, good hit. Good pass defense right there. But what I've seen of Colin Peterson, number 36, I have liked it. Uh, I hope he's got a cast around him that will take him back here. because He's got three more years after this. Pulling again on fourth down and screens it out and completes it, first down. Nice play to Monahan. Looked like that play was going to get a lot more out of it, uh, but good recovery by the linebackers. You can see right here, he gets the pressure from the outside. They let him come, invite him in, drops it out in the flat. He has two, two linemen out in front of him. Nice move right in here by Monahan to pick up the first down. Run stripped him up, and here's another look. You can see Foran raising his hand, and the quarterback looking away to screen it back to the backside. Ball down to the 37-yard line. It's first and 10. Monahan again. And the short hit for short yardage. Maybe three to the 34. That's the same play that Monahan busted for a big run in the uh, second quarter, but uh, they haven't been able to run that play very effectively. Just an inside trap coming back with Monahan, but you can see nobody really gets at that linebacker, and the backside linebacker is the one that comes in and makes the play, sneaks in behind the pulling guard. Two-way game coming up right after this. Malik with Central in Hampshire. Stay tuned to that one. Monahan again. Now we get a flag thrown. Somebody may have caught Monahan by the face mask. Andy Klein, number 73, is in there for Carthage. Made the play. And the Blue Boys cheering section comes alive as we get the call. Yeah, face mask call, so that'll be your first down and some yardage. Getting our, clo our cola closer to the goal line. Here's a trap again to Monahan, and he's just about to pop, as you can see right there. That's right where the face mask is. Body going one way and his head turned back the other. And this will be the big one. It's different from the pros. There's no occasional face mask. It's all a big 15-yarder. There's a happy Jim Unruh patting Christian Boyer, his big defensive end on the, on the helmet. Boy, have they done a good job today. Nine minutes here. From the 17-yard line, first and 10, Arcola looking for a second touchdown. 
and Pullen. Got room to run. And Pullen couldn't find a receiver. Bruns knocks him out of bounds inside the 15. Pick up a four. Great coverage downfield, which forced him to run. You can see they do a nice job. He really only has one receiver open. I shouldn't say open, in the route deep. He's covered. It looked like he had more room to run, but the linebacker squeezed this down quite nicely. Ball on the 13-yard line, second and six. Pullen, who was shaken up on the last play of the first half, blocking on a kickoff return. Very woozy when he got to his feet, but he has been back. He has not missed a snap. Of course, most of our cola feels as though it's got its head spinning right now. They're trying to get a score. And second man through for it. Bring up a third down. Warren, 6'1", 175, a converted tight end. And as we told you at the top of the show, this team settled down when Florin won the tailback derby. And he certainly has done the job for the uh, regular season and through the playoffs. 1,700 yards, a five-yard average. But Carthage has had his number this morning. Well, I think Carthage, the way they're playing today, could have had anybody's number. They're just playing an outstanding. It's one of those games that coaches talk about, that perfect game. Third and four, pulling, looking, and... Nice complete catch. and caught touchdown Kevin. Oh my gosh, it's Peterson again. Colin Peterson, outstanding play. He's got both touchdowns, a good throw, but an even better catch. Colin Peterson, an 11-yard strike. Defense wrapped all around him. Went up there aggressively for the football and came down with it. Certainly plays a lot older than his age, and obviously plays with a lot more sense of experience. Looks like they'll uh, set up on a kickoff here. Garcia made 10 out of 18 extra points. And Valente Garcia kicks it up, kicks it low, but kicks it true. So Arcola gets its first score here in the second half. 8-11 to go in this one. It's now 45-13. to We'll be back. Arcola on the board for the second half. Well, it cuts the lead some, 45 to 13. Still pretty healthy for Carthage. There is Colin Peterson, who's caught both touchdowns today for Barry Pullen. He will now kick it off to Jefferson and Morehouse. With eight minutes, 11 seconds left to go in this 1A championship. This one, guys on the 35, oh, it's a free it. ball, and it looks like Arcola may have covered it. Nope, that was close. Looked like they did, but uh, the official gave it back to Carthage. Looks like Livingston came up and made the play. There he is, Justin Livingston, but that was close. Here's the touchdown again, Jack. First Little counteraction here off a of bootleg. Wide receiver clears out, the other receiver comes up underneath, and I like the way he goes up and gets that football. Well, he beat uh, the safety, Jacob, and what an outstanding play. Nine plays, 51 yards, 335 on the clock. A little too late, but a nice drive for the Purple Riders. Here come the Blue Boys again, and this is Justin Livingston, number 22. As Jim Unruh starts to substitute in his backfield. It also looks like there's an entire offensive line in there. The new quarterback, number five, Chad Boyer. Hands and Chad Boyer is the quarterback Livingston. now. As you look at Garcia, number 75. So Boyer is in there. Now the two mini backs come out who played big today, Morehouse and Covington, 23 and 24. And this is Peterson. Number 36, Ben Jefferson takes it. And Jefferson playing that left half spot. Gets a couple. Number 66, Junior Gowana made that stop. Again, just ball control here. It'll be interesting to see how well Boyer handles this uh, wing T offense. He's only a junior, so this is great experience for him. They've got Brian Jacob, number 21, in. More players come off. Jason Jefferson comes out. He's played outstanding on both sides of the ball. Sam. 
Naylor as well. Second man through, this is Jacob, and he is upended by Barry Pullen, the safety coming up, and this will bring up a fourth down. So Jim Unruh has it well in hand, giving some players a chance to play in a championship game and watch Pullen here with the Lake trip. You see Barry Pullen coming up here, making a nice tackle, 5'11", 170-pound senior. Nice job, two-way player. Good effort, good shot right there, Barry Pullen. And Granger to punt it. Doesn't get much on this one either. Carries to the 40, but there's that turf bounce. And comes back the other way down, just outside the 40. So Arcola with 5.49 to go after that 22-yard punt will send out its offensive unit. And it looks like we have an entire new defensive unit for Carthage. Here's Corey Whitaker, number 58. Josh Van Meter, number 10, is in there. Number 49, Darren Melvin. 5.31 to go on a whistle. We may have uh, too much time here. Have dead ball, encroachment move. Now they call First the encroachment out. against the defense. So a couple of the new players in there getting a little bit antsy. And there is Jim Unruh. He will have his first 1A championship. Young coach coming out. A little older now. But the first one will be really nice for him. Monahan straight up the middle, and look at Monahan go. He gets 20 yards, and he goes to the 40-yard line. Naylor and Chad Boyer coming up to make the stop. Good run here by Monahan. Again, the inside trap that they run so frequently, and uh, a little different uh, defensive cast to run it against. And a nice run back. You see right there the trap by Casey Coglin. And Monahan, 6'3", 180-pound senior, nice run. 16 yards, exactly five minutes to go. First and 10 on the 40 of Carthage for Arcola. Pullen again to throw. Can't find anybody. Good run here. And he gets a first down to the 30-yard line. Barry Pullen found his receivers covered and did a good scamper. Ryan Sullivan, number 61, on the tackle. Nice to see Arcola come back here and get another score. And here you can see just a straight drop back. Receiver's pretty well covered, so he just steps up into the pocket and cuts back here against the linebacker and picks up the first down. Special thanks to our spotter today, Mark Sikori. He's going to be working overtime right now as both teams will be emptying their benches. Short to Monahan, another five yards. Down to the 25. Andy Klein on the stop. Good shot of Kevin Monahan, who changed his jersey earlier. He's number 34 to start the ball game, but uh, from the uh, rug burns, he got a, his jersey a little bloodied and had a change with the new high school rules. Second and seven, and Foran trying left tackle, and Foran takes a whole group of blue boys with him and. He gets within two yards of a first down. Looks like uh, Jamie McClintock, number 56, a senior, in on the stop. There's Van Asher, look at him, and Lathrop. Been a long morning and afternoon for Arcola. But, it's they tough. Get, but they got here. Well, they got here. I was just going to mention, it's tough to come down to play in the state championship game and end up having this kind of a ball game. But, you know, they're 13-0. They got down to this this point it's tough to lose this way but you know second is is uh, is better than not having been here much better much much better for Arcola this will be its uh, second straight second place finish there you look at Joe Marks the Purple Riders came down here in 1991 and they were dropped pretty well by Stockton back then too Monahan again, and Monahan looking for first down yardage may be a little short. 
They're looking to have fourth and short. Jamie Brown, a junior defensive lineman on the stop. Again, the trap. You can see the trapper coming right at you here. Jeremy Schumpweiler, 5'6", 190-pound senior. Monahan comes up just a little short. Fourth and one. And they get it. Monahan again with two and a half to go. There is Kevin Monahan. He's had a busy work day. He really has. He hasn't got all the publicity that uh, Warren has gotten, but he has 960 yards and 14 touchdowns. And right there, that big, tall, lanky Kevin Monahan, 6'3, 180 pounds, picks up the first down. And Sid Halls comes out, gets a tremendous hand from the Blue Boys. And the bench and the stands. And there is Monahan. He comes out. 16 carries, 99 yards for Kevin Monahan. Again, part of a proud family of athletes who've come out of Arcola and played and starred for the Purple Riders. Well, a whole new offense in here. It'd be great to see these kids score. And number 10, Steve Wagner is stopped for a loss behind the line. But that run. 20 years from now, when he's telling people about it in the state championship game, will be one of the most exciting runs that was ever described. Quarterback is Corey Logan. He is a junior, but he was warming up on the sidelines when Pullen was shaken up at the end of the first half. Bruns comes out. All the Monaghan kids, by the way, were just told by our ace statistician. Have gone to Notre Dame. That an amazing statistic. Yeah. Any play? Yeah, they all play. Clock now at 1.38. Well, if you drive through town, you can recognize their house. They don't have regular shingles up there. It's a Here it comes. golden dome type. <laughs> their house is quite unusual. All right, Dave Berkson, our statistician, man of many notes. We appreciate his help and uh, trivial pursuit. Joe Marks still coaching. There he is. Been an assistant from 1979 to 1993 when Steve Thomas retired. Thomas in the coaching hall of fame. Joe did an awful lot of work with him. Also Byron Bradford, who was with Thomas all those years and three titles, came back from retirement to coach this year. Coach on the line. Second down, 11 to go. Give it to the tailback. And once again, that's Wagoner, a freshman. And all the Blue Boys are coming out, and I, we just got the water shower for Coach Jim Unra as you look at Wagner go. And meeting him, number 32, Robbie Robinson, a sophomore. And there is a very happy and wet Jim Unra. In this kind of weather, some of that stuff could turn to ice cubes before it hits the ground. Third and five. Final minute here. Logan. And a little trouble on the exchange. Fumble. It looks like the Blue Boys have recovered. And they have recovered on their own 15-yard line. Colin Granger, the punter, number 64, in there on the defensive line, has made the recovery. And so... Carthage will have one more offensive series. Let's take a look. You can see he just missed the handoff. He puts it on the hip. And there's a very alert young man that picks up a fumble. His claim to fame. That game deciding fumble that occurred in the fourth quarter. Nobody will know the score as he tells the story. Uh, we'll have one more snap. I guess when he tells his grandkids it will be a game deciding fumble. And there they fumble back. And this time it looked like Arcola was right there. And Jacob Grant, number 82, a senior end on the exchange, fell on the ball for the Purple Riders. So I don't want it. You can have it. We've got 27 seconds to go. Let's finish this. I'd love to see Arcola score right here. I don't want to be a, too much of a fan up in the booth, but I'd, I'd love to see Joe Marks and the Purple Riders get a score in here. Well, they will bring Logan in at quarterback. Wagner and they're at the tailback spot. And there's a happy bunch 
of Blue Boy fans. Up the middle inside the 15, and that will do it. Clock is ticking down. It is over. Carthage with a resounding 45 to 13 win over Arcola, the first championship in school history. And Jim Unruh has done it. Somewhere in the middle of that is Coach Jim Unruh. And he has got, there he is going over to shake the hands of Joe Marks. And uh, there is Byron Bradford, by the way, the longtime coach, assistant coach. And there is a soaked and pleased Jim Unruh. Both teams shake hands, wish each other well. We certainly hope that the injured players are okay. We haven't had any further report on Van Tripp taken to the hospital. But uh, the moment right now belongs to the Carthage Blue Boys and their coach, Jim Unruh. A stunning performance offensively for Carthage. They really came out here and played a near perfect offensive game. Take a look at Joel Morehouse, that wonderful haircut of his right there. Oh, <laughs> oh that, geez. That razor can, went amok. Something oh my. shorted out. He doesn't care. He's. Those look like the haircuts my dad used to give us when we were very young. He put us on down in the basement and up on the chair. And there was Joey Dion, the quarterback who did such a masterful job directing this offense. We will take a break, come back with the award ceremony highlights in just a minute. Well, it started with the Purple Riders having a championship. The Carthage Blue Boys did not have one. Well, they're all even now, at least uh, in the last decade or so. Carthage, 45 to 13. Jack McInerney, it was uh, domination as we look at the second place Ladies and gentlemen, Purple Riders getting their uh, the getting their second place trophy, which uh, they're not too happy about right now, but it'll certainly look good in a few years when they tell their kids about it. Well, pure and simple, Carthage came out early and set the tone, and uh, Ken Patrick obviously was the tone the entire ball game. Just a great job by the uh, Carthage offensive line and running backs. They just dominated the entire ball game from start to finish. Patrick with more than 200 yards in the first half alone. And the other, the other uh, runners in the backfield, the other ball carriers are with Morehouse, and then again with, uh, with, with uh, Covington also did a great job. And Dennis Covington, and uh, uh, but you have to, you have to look. And at the beginning of this, when we started talking about this game, we heard that uh, the quarterback was the most valuable and player on this team. And I'm looking at the statistics. The he doesn't throw. He's only thrown 17 completions. He doesn't run. What does he do? Well, we saw it, and we saw it in a big way. Joey Dion, a tremendous job uh, running that offense. And the sleight of hand, again, would make Houdini jealous. He really is a ma magician running this offense. And you have to with all the misdirection. And not one time was the ball on the ground, which is a key factor when you run this kind of an offense. There is Barry Pullen, the quarterback for Arcola, led them to an undefeated season into this championship game, and he is going to be getting his uh, medal in just a moment. Oftentimes we've talked about how now, difficult it is because that last game presentation. is the one that they really remember, the and they had a great season, but uh, this one will be in the memories for a while. School, who finished the season with a final record of 13 wins and one loss. And you hear the public address. Mr. Sullivan, congratulations. Here's a second place to the trophy Purple going to our coldest Purple School. Riders. This year's second place finisher. There's Kevin Monahan, number 32. And he had a good game with the ball. Well, they just ran into a buzzsaw today. The award ceremony continues here at the 50-yard line at Hancock Stadium, and there are Roger the Blue Boys Coach Jim taking a look at Kenton Patrick. He's there, number 44, with Beard. With Beard, yeah. Four touchdowns. The first one from 81 yards, second one from three, third from 50, and then he added one more from eight. You know, it's amazing when we look at these teams after the ball game for the championship presentations, when they take these helmets off, 
it's scary some of these haircuts. <laughs> well, that's high school, right? I know it is, but. And now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Look at Jason Jefferson. The that's right. There's another one. Look at Hulls. Oh, my. Of the first place medallions They're going to have to go home to their parents. The well, the trophy. sad part is, can the you imagine the advertisement for the barber in Carthage? Oh, Carthage my. Not very good advertising. Some of us are very jealous of the fact that they have that much to take off. Well, as my dad used to tell me after he used to do things like that to me for an update, it'll grow back. <laughs> yeah, it'll grow back. Some of and us are so the, jealous. You know, I'll be eight years older by the time the it does. But. And the trophy. Oh, First, a special my. medallion is presented to the principal, On Mr. The Roger Page. Trophy stand right now. Roger Page, the principal. And now the Mr. Joe Reed, the athletic director. And, to Coach Unruh and, and Jim to Unruh. his team captains. And there is Joey Dion. We told you he was the team manager back when they were in the finals in 1988. He's grown up now. Jim Unruh came out of Western Illinois. This was his first and only head coaching job. And oh my, they followed him here to Wilmington. <laughs> he was the road man. Watch my back, I guess is what that means. Trophy. We've done a lot of 1A games, Mike, but this could be one of the most dominating offenses we've, we've seen in this championship game. Well, you'd have to go back to that uh, 93 game on the ice when Harden Calhoun took apart Storm yes. Newman. Uh, I believe that was the all-time record in terms of points, 49 points. The but they, uh, today, uh, the conditions there were just abominable and, and, and taking nothing away from Harden Calhoun. This was a well-oiled offensive machine that knew exactly what it wanted to do and did it. And while you see some big individual statistics, you talk about team efforts, everything just went in coordination. It was just marvelous to watch. It really was. And there was one of the, the, the people that got it done, done both offensively and defensively, Sid Hull, 6'2", 250-pounder, was really the anchor of the defense for Carthage, playing nose guard right over the center and made some great plays in either direction, but also anchored that offensive line that opened up all those big yards for Patrick up the middle. We'll have a word with Coach Jim Unruh, and then we'll make way for the two-way game. First, we'll take one final break here. When you leave Hancock All right, back at Hancock Stadium, and we take a look at the final score once again, 45 to 13, and it has been a day for Carthage High School. We've got Coach Jim Unruh with us. Jim, you there? Congratulations, Coach. Okay, we're going to get to him in just a second. Again, Jack, to recap, uh, Jim Unruh comes out of Western Illinois, and this is his first head coaching job, really first high school job of any kind. And, Jim, uh, it's been a long time coming. It must have been worth the wait. Oh, it was worth the wait. Uh... Uh, it's an exciting feeling. These kids have really worked their tails off to get here to the state championship and win the state championship football game. Jim, you know, did you think you would be as dominant as you were? We we talked about all the the different offense that you had, all the, the different ball players that you had to throw at the opposition. Did you think it would work as well? I really didn't think we'd be able to score this much, but uh, we performed well all year on offense, and we were able to do that today. Kenton Patrick, what a story. Now, this is a kid who, I guess, was big compared to the rest of your backfield. Boy, did he have a day today. He had a fantastic day. In fact, our backs ran hard all day, and uh, that line did an outstanding job of opening up some holes. Yeah, we're going to take a look at one of uh, one of Kenton Patrick's touchdowns. Meanwhile, tell me a little bit about Joey Dion. Here's a kid. We wondered how good he was, and I guess we saw it. Yeah, Joey Dion, we, do, we haven't passed much with him this year, but he has a one heck of a passing arm. But the number one thing he brings to us is leadership. Uh, from his freshman year to his senior year, one thing can be said, he's been an undefeated quarterback when he started this year, and uh, it's a tremendous feeling. The other thing I can mention is this group of uh, this group of seniors, 19 seniors, uh, through their whole high school career, have finished off with a, with a state championship and a 59-2 and two record overall. Jim, you had an outstanding group of people. We said you had eight starters who had been three-year starters for you. For you personally, uh, having been defeated early in the championship game, having gotten there early, was this something uh, that was sweeter that you had Arcola to beat today? Yeah. It, it was sweeter in the fact that uh, I think the first the first time I was there after three years, in a way, you know, I was young, I was foolish. I thought, geez, this isn't, this isn't that hard to get there. And... and uh, 
you know, it's been seven more years since then, and I tell you what, it's tough to get here, and uh, it's just a tremendous feeling. All right, congratulations, Jim. You look still pretty young to me, though, I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I hope showing, I'm young. Yeah, okay, we're showing you a touchdown here. This is an 81-yard play. Kenton Patrick, were you happy to see this pop open? Oh, yeah. Uh, Kenton Patrick did, did, has done a great job for us all year long, but uh, in, in the playoffs, he really came alive and got some yardage for us. Four touchdowns on the day, and your two halfbacks are outstanding. The misdirection must have driven them nuts. Well, that's what we try to do. When you have three backs that rush the ball for over 1,000 yards, uh, it's hard. It's anyone's guess sometimes as who's getting the ball, and uh, uh, today we just executed great. Yeah, we have to give our cameramen some credit. They followed it, too. Coach, we'll let you go to celebrate. Again, uh, 241 yards on the day for Kenton Patrick. Nearly all of that in the first half. Congratulations, 1A champion coach Jim Unruh. Thank you very much. All right. 510 yards, Jack McInerney, of total offense. Absolutely incredible. As I mentioned earlier, it was a clinic. They didn't do anything wrong. Uh, they had a magician at quarterback. They had two outstanding scat backs at the halfbacks, and they had a mule at fullback. It was just a clinic of how to run the wing tee and you watch And you watch that line on both sides of the ball since they're largely the same players. Sid Hulls, you have to give him a tremendous amount of credit. Absolutely. Normally the uh, publicity goes to the running backs, but that offensive line was outstanding. They dominate from start to finish. Well, we've got the two-way game ready to come up for you next. We've got Bill Gourley and we've got Jim Blaney down there. And uh, we get Jim Blaney out from behind the desk. He should, have, he should have a good time. And that'll be coming to you. Of course, tonight we will have the 3A and 4A games. Jack and I will be here for the 3A game and then Jim and Bill for 4. And tomorrow, tomorrow we've got 5 and 6A. And that includes our big number 6A uh, action, Wheaton Warrenville South and top-rated Neighborville Central. That'll be a big game. We mentioned earlier that this is the only team in the last 10 years that started out the year being ranked number one and has come all the way down to the state championship game still holding on to that ranking. And the man to watch there, you're going to watch Jim Tumulty, who's an outstanding uh, runner. He's been doing it on one leg. But John Thorne, who won a state championship back here in 1992, he's back for the first time since and never underestimate a Wheaton Warrenville South team. Coming up, though, we've got the two-way game. While we have a minute, we get Jim and uh, uh, and Bill Gorley ready for you. We will just uh, give you a, a bit of an idea. As we told you, 510 yards of total offense, most of that on the ground. Joey Dion, the one time he went to pass in the first half, he was pressured. He ended up with a 50-yard run. That tells you something right off the bat, what kind of athletes they have at Carthage. And those guys all started since they were sophomores. 33 wins in three years, a tremendous team effort. Dennis Covington, 47 yards. Patrick, we told you, 241 yards. Dione had 60, 50 on the one run of 50 yards. And uh, Morehouse, 134 yards as well. So you can see this is a team that uh, had a purpose and certainly came, uh, came here and, uh, and did the job.